All right, let's continue factoring binomials. So a binomial is a polynomial with two terms. So observe the geometric patterns below because this is going to help you to do some specific binomial factorings. So if you look at a squared, we can imagine that as being a, a by a squared, right? A here and a here. That's just like our algebra types. What if I say minus b squared? How can you imagine that? That means I'm taking out another square out of this big one. I'll assume A and B are large enough to do that. So I'm taking away a B squared out. So this is B and this is B, and I'm taking a B squared out of A squared. So here's A squared, and I'm taking away B squared. The question is, how can I make this leftover part here look like a rectangle? What can I do? I can split it. So this already is a rectangle. What can I do with this piece? So I'm going to have to play with these two pieces and see if I can move this somewhere uh, interesting. So let's move it. From here to here, it's A. From here to here, it's A. But from here to here, it's B. So from here to here was B. So this part from here to here is going to be A minus B. From, from here to here was A. And I took away this b part. So this part is also a minus b, which suggests that I can take that piece and rotate it like that, and then it should fit right there. Then from here to here was my a, which you see here. This part here was b. So when you rotate it, that went there. And from here to here was a minus b. That's why it fits there. And so what are the what's the area of this rectangle then? This is a plus b times a minus b. So that's how difference of squares factors then. Difference of squares, the factors are a plus b times a minus b. Isn't that interesting to see this geometrically? All right, let's do some examples using that formula then. So let's factor difference of squares. Again, remember our goal. The first step in any factoring is to pull out greatest common factor and then use other techniques. So let's try that. So x squared minus y squared is going to factor as a x minus y, x plus y. What we're really doing is just substituting a to be x and b to be y. Can you see how substitution works? That's how all of them are going to work. All right, let's try that. So the first task is to get this difference of squares to look like this. The only way you can do that is if you wrote it like that. Make it look like something squared minus something squared. Go ahead and do that. And then if you do that, then the factors are going to be whatever goes in the bracket here, that minus whatever goes here, and then that plus that. So let's see. Whose square is going to give you 25? That will be 5. Whose square is going to give you x squared? It will be x. So what goes in here then? That's 5x. So if 5x goes there, then this is going to be 5x, and this is going to be 5x. So let's just fill those in. What's going to go in here? 16. Whose square is 16? That will be 4, right? So 4y goes there, because y squared is going to be gotten by giving y here, and then when you square it. So 4 squared is 16. y squared is y squared. And so 4y will go in the second spot here. Can you see? So the a is now 5x, and the b is now 4y. So it's a substitution, really. So go ahead and do the next one on your own. Pause the video and try. So again, get it in that form. So this is fixed. If you have a difference of squares, it's going to look like this. Now all you have to do is figure out what goes in here and here, and then fill the rest. Pause the video. Go ahead, try it. So whose square is 49? So good, 7u. So that will go there and there. 121, so that will be square root of 121, which you know how to do. Factor 121 and take square root. 11v, good, and then that will go here and here. All right, try next one on your own. Hey, okay, next one, look. I can't really use difference of squares here because that's 8 is not a perfect square, is it? 
So first, remember what our first step is. Look across and see if there is a greatest common factor to pull out. And is there? Do you see a greatest common factor between 8 and 18? Try it. So 2. 2 is factoring. Good. So when you factor the 2 out, you're going to have 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 9 is 18. So that works out. Now this is the difference of squares. So the 2 is just going to follow through. So 4a squared, so that's going to be a 2a and a 3b, and then complete it. So what goes in the first bracket there? Good, 2a, 2a goes there, 3b, 3b goes there. So 2a minus 3b and 2a plus 3b. Would it matter whether I write 2a plus 3b times 2a minus 3b? Does it matter which term I write first? The answer is no because of commutative property of multiplication, right? All right, try that. Again, factor out the greatest common factor first. So they share a 5, they share a S, and they share a T. And now we have difference of squares, and go ahead and factor them. So now you just have to write these terms here. Good. Any questions here? Please rewind and rewatch it. This is very important. If you're not getting it, pause the video, rewind, and keep trying. Don't give up. This is sometimes where people fall apart because for some people, this can be very difficult. And if you are one such person, there is no harm in re-watching and re-watching and trying to understand. Otherwise, do talk to somebody in person because that might help you immensely because they can see where you're getting stuck. All right, how about that? I can pull out a 3. Now, this is an addition of squares, and 7 is not even a square. So does it factor anymore? No, good. So this is it. All right, how about that? That is a difference of squares. So can you try? Whose square? Something square is going to give me x to the 4. What is that something? It's going to be x squared. So x squared here, x squared here and here. y squared will go there and there and there. Are we done? Hey, remember what it says, factor completely. So if completely, I have, I have factored here, but not completely because look, x squared minus y squared factors again. So now what? So the x squared plus y squared factor is going to stay as is. So that we cannot change because that does not factor anymore. But x squared minus y squared factor, so what do you think you should put here? x, so that means we can put x here and here. What goes here? Complete it. Good. So those are your factors. This factor, remember, it carries through. You can just leave off some factors. All right, let's talk about factoring a sum of cubes. So that just means x cubed plus y cubed. How can we visualize something like that? So that would be x cubed will be this big cube, and the y cube will be this small cube. No matter what direction you look at it from, you can see that it's just one cube plus another cube. So let's say this bigger one here is x pi, x pi, x, x cubed, and the smaller cube here is y by y by y or y cubed. So take a look at both of them together from different directions so you can see how there is nothing underneath the blue cubed and there is nothing behind the pink cubed. So we are actually going to build that bottom layer and talk about how we can then use that to create our formula for x cubed plus y cubed, x cubed which is the top cubed, blue cubed, and the y cubed is the bottom cubed. So let's see how we can build that. Here we have x cubed and you can see that this is really just a cube from all directions. Do you see that? So now 
Let's see if we can put a slice under it like so. So we've made it Y longer. Can you see that? So we're just going to go around and show you how all we've done is extended our cube so that it's X plus Y tall. You had X here and Y here. It's still X wide and X width. Can you see that? So it's X squared is the bottom and X plus Y is the top. So that's what we have right now. To it, we are going to add a piece to the side like so. Take a look. We have to adjust it a little bit. So this is Y square, but then the length of it, you can see, is X plus Y. You can see it from all directions. This is the part that's sticking out that we want left over. But right now, we have the green and the red together. So you can see how we've added that. So what we have added right now is X plus Y times X squared and Y squared times X plus Y. That's what we've added because Y squared is this part here and then X plus Y is the length. But we only want X cubed plus Y cubed. So we need to take that bottom slice out. Let's see how we can do that. So let's just quickly review. We have our cube and then we build up the green portion under it. So now we have a rectangular prism, which is X by X times X plus Y. Then we added a piece to the side. Here we have Y times Y, Y squared. And then not only that, we also made it long enough so that the length is X plus Y. So we added a piece X plus Y times Y squared. So let's now remove the piece that we do not need. So we're only left with X cubed plus Y cubed. So here we have that this piece that I just added here, this one, we're going to remove this amount. So from here to here, it's X plus Y. From here to here, it's X. And the height is Y of this piece. So we're going to remove that. That means subtract. So how does that work? Let's take a look. Look all the way to the side. All we have left now, I'm going to move the direction a little bit. See that? So if I change that, you can see how that's, you can just move it and remove just this much amount. So we can pretty much see that we have removed that bottom slice, which from here to here, it's X. This height here is Y. So all the way from here to here is X plus Y. From here to here is X. And the height is Y. So if you remove that piece, then what we have left is X cubed plus Y cubed. So let's write that as a formula now. So X cubed plus Y cubed. If you look at the greatest common factor of all the terms that we have so far, we'll have X plus Y times X squared minus XY and then plus y squared, or x squared plus y squared minus xy. Either way is fine. So we have our sum of cubes formula here. So we have our formula, but a lot of times when people think of formulas, they feel like they have to memorize it. The reason I like mathematics is you don't have to memorize if you can logically deduce what the formula is going to be. So the visual aspect that we just talked about may help some people, but let's talk about another way you can think of this formula as. So we know that x cubed plus y cubed, we want to factor it as x plus y times something. x multiplied by x squared will give me x cubed, right? So x times x squared will give me x cubed, y times y squared will give me y cubed, but we know that distributive property of multiplication over addition, we will get additional terms like x times y squared, which will give you xy squared. But on the left-hand side, 
there is no xy squared. So we need to put an additional term here so that y times that quantity will get rid of x times y squared. The y squared, so that means we need additional y, and x, so that means additional x. So it would have to be negative xy, which is similar to how we visualized it. So this is another way you can think of this formula. And then if you continue multiplying, so y times x squared is positive y x squared. x times negative x y would be negative x squared y. And plus y times plus y squared is plus y cubed. And then the y times negative x y will add to positive x y squared. And you will end up with just x cubed plus y cubed. So you can check that multiplication and see for yourself that it works. Of course, now that we have factoring a sum of cubes, we would like to know what happens if you have a difference of cubes. So as a mathematician, if you worked hard once, we would like to take advantage of that and take a look at x cubed plus y cubed, which was this formula. So one way to think of this would be, if I could replace my y with a negative y, what happens? I get negative y times negative y times negative y, which will give you a negative y cubed. So that would be difference of cubes then, wouldn't it? So in our sum of cubes formula, replace y to negative y. So we have x squared, we remain x squared. Negative y times negative y is still positive y squared. But over here, y times a negative will make it positive xy. So that's really the only difference. So if you know one of the formulas, you can get the other one by replacing y with negative y. For some of you, it might still help to see visually what that means. So that's what we'll do next. So visually, x cubed will represent just a cube where you have sides are x by x by x. So height is x, width is x, and length is x. What does it mean to remove y cubed from it? Let's just look at it visually first, and then we'll get all the pieces together. Let's talk about what it means to have x cubed and removing a y cubed from it. So first, let's just get a y cubed. So here's my y cubed, and I want to remove it from the original cube. So I need to gouge it out. So this is the cube that we are taking out, removing it from the original cube. So we're going to have to see how that looks like. So we'll have to split it in certain ways so we can identify what these pieces represent. So here we have x cubed. And we're going to break it into these pieces so we can see how to remove a y cubed from it. So our original cube was x by x by x. And then from it, we're removing this little cube y cubed. So x cubed minus y cubed. So let's remove it and see how it looks like. So here we have x cubed minus y cubed. Let's see how all these pieces fit together then. So we have that from here to here is x minus y. Here to here is x minus y. And from here to here is x minus y. So we have the following pieces then. We have the blue, the blue piece in the back, which will be x minus y will be its width, but then it's x times x. So x squared times x minus y will be the volume of this back piece. Let's take a look at the green piece in front here. It will be x minus y times x. But then the width will be just y, because that's this piece right here from when we removed the y cubed. And then the red last piece, which will become x minus y, which is this x minus y times y times y, so y squared. So this red piece that's come from the front here will be x minus y times y squared. 
And then just like before, we will factor out greatest common factor, x minus y, and then times x squared plus xy plus y squared. So you can see the similarity between visualization of the two sum and difference of cubes, but you have a better sense of how the formula is. So now let's take some examples. All right, let's see if we can use the formula now. So again, we have to do a cubed minus b cubed would be what? Our formula, we have to remember x cubed minus y cubed was x minus y times x squared plus xy plus y squared. So we're just substituting a for x and b for y and rewriting it. So now, what are we going to do here? Again, same setup. Anytime you have factoring, the first thing to do is see if you can factor out greatest common factor out. And if you can do that, then continue the rest. So this is difference of cubes. So again, we're going to write difference of cubes. And this is our formula. So all you have to do is fill in the blanks. So what are you going to have here? 8x cubed. Whose cubed is 8x cubed? So really, you're taking cube root of 8x cubed. And you already know how to do that. So that will be 2x. So 2x will go there and there and there. Then cube root of 27y cubed, that will be 3y. 3y will go there and there and there. So final answer will be that. I want to show you something. So if you don't actually memorize that formula, but you remember that the first term, if this is x cubed minus y cubed, is x minus y, and you get this 2x minus 3y, then this term is the following. 2x times what number is going to give you 8x cubed? Well, 2 times 4 is going to give you 8, and x times x squared is going to give you x cubed. So 2x times 4x squared is going to give me 8x cubed. Similarly, negative 3y times a positive 9y squared is going to give me negative 27y squared. Once you have the first two terms, the first and the last term in the second bracket can be gotten just by looking at 2x times what is that number? Negative 3y times what number gives me negative 27y cubed. And then the middle number is multiplication of those two. 2 times 3 is 6, and x times y is xy. If this is a minus sign, then this is a plus sign. So that's some, uh, if you make some of those connections, maybe it will make it easier to memorize that formula. All right, try this one again. Factor out greatest common factor first. That's always your first step. So let's do that. And then it's difference of cubes. So what should we put here? x. So I'll go x. We'll go here, here, and here. What about here? Cube root of 8 is 2. So 2y, and then 2y, 2y, and 2y. And then simplify. x squared, 2xy. 2 squared is 4y squared is y squared. Once you have this term, then x times x squared is my x cubed. And negative 2y times positive 4y squared is going to give me negative 8y cubed. And then the middle term is going to be the product of those two. And if that's a minus, then that's a plus. All right, try this next one on your own. Okay, so again, the important part is to have this formula. Memorize this formula. If I woke you up from sleep, you should be able to spit that formula out. That's how uh, much mastery you should have with these formulas. Normally, I tell you how you don't have to wrote memorize it. But these formulas, it will be beneficial to you if you memorize it, because it will make solving problems, uh, especially in your next class, much easier if you remember these formulas. Pause the video here, use the sum of cubes formula just like we did difference of cubes formula and see what you can do. Go ahead, try on your own. You can do it. Don't just sit there waiting for me to show it to you.
So you're replacing the two x's and the three y's into the formula. Again, remember how I showed you how to do that with uh, difference of cubes? You can do the same here. 2x times 4x squared will give me 8x cubed. 3y times positive 9y squared will give me 27y cubed. And the middle term is the product of those two. And if this is a plus, this is a minus. If this is a minus, this is a plus. And that's how you can do sum or differences of cubes. Factor out the greatest common factor first, and then apply the formula. So what you put here, x. So if x goes there, it will go here and here and here. What about here? 2y. So 2y will go here, here, and here, and then finish it off. Do the next one on your own. Pause the video, please. So again, you have to be able to rewrite this. If you rewrite that, then it's just a matter of applying the formula. So memorize the formula and then try these problems.